Hello fellow astro enthusiasts. Tonight I thought I would talk about the Mead Infinity 80mm Refractor Telescope and why I love to use this telescope as a visual scope. When I'm outside doing astrophotography, sometimes you know I just enjoy doing visual work, looking at some objects in the sky, and this is usually the scope that I turn to for that. It's just so lightweight and portable, you can set it up and be good to go in, in no time. Um, it's got a 400 millimeter focal length, so it does you know take a, in a wide field of view, especially with the low magnification eyepiece. But when you're hunting down faint fuzzies, you know, deep sky objects and, and the like, um, you know, a wide field of view does help, you know, finding them, especially when you're hot, star hopping on a, you know, a, a, a manually controlled mount. This is just an altitude azimuth, you know, you, you point and look telescope, basically. Um, and it's got an 80 millimeter aperture, so it does drink in a good amount of light. So, you know, if the deep sky object that you're looking for is pretty faint, the 80 millimeter aperture will help you know help it stand out from the from the uh, darkness of the sky around it. Now, from a, a decently dark sky site, uh, basically with this telescope, you could you could see every messy object and you know plenty of other objects, and it's just a really fun fun scope to use. Now tonight we've got the Moon, Jupiter, and Saturn visible towards the south, and I thought it would be fun to take this telescope out and and take a quick look at them. Now with the 400 millimeter focal length, you know, it's not really ideal for the planets. It's great for large objects like the moon and, and things like that. But uh, we'll still uh, uh, look at the planets real quickly with this and, you know, just see what we can see. It, it's, it's not bad. I mean, you can still see detail on, on the planets and, you know, the rings of Saturn and, and things like that. But um, yeah, why don't we take the, the telescope out real quick and, and just uh, take a quick peek at uh, the moon, Jupiter and Saturn. So this is actually a quick look at the full moon tonight. Uh, you might notice that blue fringing around the moon. That's because with this refractor telescope, it's, it focuses the blue wavelength at a different point than it does, you know, red and green. So you get that blue coloration. It's not quite as visible visually when you're looking at the object through the telescope, but it does, you know, show up quite well when you're filming. But just bear in mind, you know, it doesn't look that bad when you're when you're observing it. But yeah, that's the uh, the full moon through the Mead Infinity 80 millimeter refractor, as it is in the sky tonight. It's quite hazy. Maybe there's some fireworks smoke up there. Who knows? But um, yeah, that's the moon. Let's take a quick look at uh, Jupiter and Saturn too, just to to stop by them. Right now we're looking through a 15 millimeter eyepiece on this telescope with no Barlow lens, so. That is just how the moon looks. It's a live view of the moon, just with the with the uh, cell phone pointed at the eyepiece. So this is a quick look at Jupiter. You can see the equatorial banding on the planet. It's quite fascinating. And if I increase the exposure, You'll be able to see some of its moons, but first I thought we would take a look at the, you know, the, the bands as they're crossing the surface of the planet. You can see the north and south equatorial band, and Jupiter is in some haze right now. But let me increase the exposure real quick, and bam, there are some of Jupiter's moons, which are always fascinating to look at. And this is through the Mead Infinity 80 millimeter with the 15 millimeter eyepiece and uh, two times Barlow lens. But you can see how that blue fringe goes away as I lower the exposure. That's that's more representative to how it actually looks visually at the eyepiece. You can definitely see some of that structure and detail in its bends. And here we have the planet Saturn. 
through the Mead Infinity 80 millimeter. I did zoom in a little bit with the camera on the on the cell phone that I'm recording this with. But that is Saturn as it is moving through our sky. And that's how it appears in the telescope. Now visually it does look a bit better than that, but you can clearly see the planet and its rings. I believe visually you can start to make out the Cassini division. You can kind of see it in this video too. And then there's also a bright equatorial band that runs across the surface of Saturn. You can kind of see in this video as well. Saturn is much smaller than Jupiter. But you can see you can still make out some nice detail with this tiny, you know, 80 millimeter scope. It's, it's a lot of fun. You know, something you can just grab and go with. But, uh, Let's increase the exposure again. And I believe, yeah, I see that dot there. That's probably Titan is my guess. One of Saturn's moons. Now when you look through the eyepiece, you can actually see the moons and you can see Saturn. And it won't be all overexposed like that. It's just the workings of the camera causes me to, to brighten it that way. But it's always cool to see the Saturnian system and you know see the moons as they're orbiting the planet like you can see those moons Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, the four main moons of Jupiter orbiting Jupiter. But that's a quick look at Saturn through the scope here. Well thanks for coming along for a quick look at uh, the moon, Jupiter, and Saturn through the Mead Infinity 80mm refractor. It's a fun versatile little telescope. You can set it up quickly and you know, you're, you're good to go right away. It's just a fun scope. I've actually done some astrophotography using this scope on deep sky objects, and I'll share some of those images as well. Uh, now, for astrophotography of those objects, I did use a tracking mount, a, a go-to mount from the Nexar 8 SE that that telescope can mount right onto it. And also, I've used an equatorial mount to take longer exposures than 30 seconds using this telescope. I don't really do too much astrophotography with this telescope anymore since I do have another 80 millimeter scope that doesn't have that blue fringing for photography. Um, but this is just a great, you know, scope if you want to start doing some wide field imaging and you've got something like this on hand, it's, it's definitely doable. And um, yeah, I mainly just use it for visual now. I'm taking, you know, photos nowadays. I'll have this scope set up too some nights when I'm, you know, just wanting to look around at the night sky. It's got that rich wide field view so hunting down those deep sky objects is a lot of fun and a lot easier with such a wide field of view. Anyways, thanks for watching and thanks for coming along with me tonight. No.